Is it true that smoking a bong helps you to balance your chakra system? I don't know. I do know, but I don't want to tell you one words. So instead of that, oh, this is fuck fixed. Well, if I put this on Instagram and I give you the link to the guy, you can't click on links on Instagram. Still, it's, 20, it's June 2022 and you can't click on links that I put there for you to click on if you watch Instagram on your smartphone. Fuck off, Instagram, you fucking stupid fuckface people. And, you know, the workaround is you got to find somebody with a laptop or an old-fashioned desktop. And then go call me up on Instagram. Because I'm told that if you load Instagram... <laughs> that way, that the link works. Oh, I can't assume that you're going to have access to it. And then you're not going to know the answer. So, I'll just, like, stop right here, okay? Now, this is the first half. And those of you who have access and the wherewithal to want to know the answer, the way that I wanted to present it to you, which is a link to another Instagram short video of somebody... But go do it right now and just go do it. And find this video and then go click on the little video. It is, it, I don't know, maybe somebody who really, really wants to see. Otherwise, I'll tell you verbally. The answer is, I just saw this Rasta guy. He wasn't a black Rasta man. He was maybe not as... Why? I don't know, because people want to know. Like, am I Jamaican? No. Have I been to Jamaica? Yes. Does it make me Jamaican? Fuck no. In the days, in those days, I went to Jamaica with my friend who was a huge pot smoker. And in those days, I didn't smoke pot. So, we did tour the Jamaican pot fields, yes. And my friend found a rest of man who had a backpack full of wheat. And he got, he got two handfuls. A primo Jamaican weed. I hope that's good enough. I mean, I don't know. I never complained. Two handfuls and five bucks American. Well, that wasn't this year. I was in Jamaica. How old am I? Oh my God. Let's say it was over 30 years. They're over 30 years ago. But in those days, I mean, five bucks was, uh, 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 that's nothing. Even in those days, five bucks American, it was nothing. In the modern day, I don't know, free. That's basically five bucks is just free. And he enjoyed it. And in the end, he still had so much pot left over. As he couldn't bring it home on the plane to Canada because it was still illegal in Canada in those days. So we just left it there for the maid. <laughs> it was her dip. I don't know. And it was, oh, well, yes! Because this guy who had dreadlocks, and you know, I don't know. You'll see it if you can go and find the link. You'll see the guy. And you know, he's bong after bong after bong. And he's got, you know, it, it's, it's just, it's true. Really, yeah, really strong wheat or lightweed, whatever it is, but cannabis spirit that you access by ingesting cannabis, that spirit helps humans balance their chakras. If one's too open or too closed or completely permanently shut, like so many people that close their heart chakra permanently, that's the number one way to devilhood. If you close your heart, you close off love, and then all that's left is devilry. And then you end up killing your physical heart, because if you close your heart chakra completely, then there's no life-giving chi that can go in and service your physical heart. And so anybody with heart disease has got a closed heart chakra. That's the and it's not smoking, and well, it, it could be booze, too. Because if you're going to drink that much, then what? You've got a closed heart chakra. Because poisoning your body is devilry. 
I know, I know, I drank for decades, I did. I'm not special because our society, well, Canadian society cherishes booze. People don't go to church and worship God, they go to the liquor store and they worship the bottle. I did too. I did, I admit it. My body doesn't want to drink booze. And when you do, the Matt Kahn talk about stopping the internal conflict and you letting go of control of the body because it's really you as the monkey mind. Because it's your monkey mind that wants to get hammered. Because the monkey mind can't stand itself, so it wants to have something to divert itself from the fact that the monkey mind hates everything because it's just cloying. It just becomes like, I'm too smart for this world and I'm not getting what I want. Even when I want to get what I want, I'm not happy. Well, that's classic. Spirituality teaches you about the mind and that the mind is never satisfied. Cannot be satisfied. It has to be busy. And if the mind is occupied, then the mind is happy. And then you can try and learn mindfulness or whatever, but in the end, the mind, even after mindfulness and you've meditated or such, the mind is going to say, I can't stand it in this room anymore. Get me the fuck out of this house. I got to get in the car. I got to go for a walk. I got to get, because that's what your mind tells you. And it's that, whatever it is. Anyways, letting go of, I did the last video. If you want more about that, go to the last video. I don't know, because I'm in a loop. It's Groundhog Day. And that's the problem. And I talked about it in a video last week that if you drop out of your monkey mind and you become heart-centered and let your heart go, the mind is always asking what's going on. And it never knows. You're always looking for somebody else to tell it, some bullshit or whatever. But when you set the intention of your heart leading you, then the mind is your mind is always going to know that the heart knows stuff and that the heart doesn't speak in words. And so then it's a matter of your mind training itself over and over again that it doesn't know. And it's going to ask a million questions. And when you're heart-centered, it's called ego or the ego. And it's an incessant thing that drives people nuts. Egoic mind is a nightmare. It's stupid. It's a monkey. Monkey see, monkey do everything monkey. Monkeying around, getting monkey into trouble. But when you fall into your heart by intention and you set your intentions for your heart, then your mind becomes the one that mine is still, what? Well, mine is trained, but other people's minds who astral project into me, for example, or use technological means to fuck with me, remote neuro monitoring, whatever. Well, that's still their minds that are still coming here and attacking me. But, spiritually, it's not my mind that runs me anymore. It used to. When in my drinking days, yeah, my monkey mind was the one. But I read that story, Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now, lots of David R. Hawkins books, Transcending the Levels of Consciousness, for example. Lots of videos, zillions of videos. And then we came across because there was a bunch of spirits that were here with me. We came across the Matt Kahn lecture, K-A-H-N, Stopping the Internal Conflict, and it's a very important lecture. Because it's about how you move to the next level up here in Earth Plane. How to become an angel and get your angel's wings. Well, Matt Kahn tells you in his lecture, summarized that, you know, you must let go of control of your body and you become an angel to your body. And the muscle memory of your body is freed from you telling it what to do. And then the muscle memory, memory of the body is free to be its own person. And you'll still ride around here as the monkey mind. Not really even the monkey mind, no. Because what happens is you become the silent witness at the seat of the soul, perhaps the pineal gland, but if, I don't know. You know, physical location is I close my eyes and it's, you know, behind my closed eyes, you know, watching the screen and the screen has got the curtains down. So that's what it is. You know, that awareness stays and watches 
can't help but watch. You're not, it's not actively watching. It's always up there when you're awake. And then the awareness is everything The is all called mind. The physical body is mind to the silent witness, which is what you will become. Then you let go of controlling the body. Because do you think you're your body? Every spiritual teacher tells you over and over again that you are not the body. You are the silent witness encased in mind, which appears to you as your human body, and then everything outside it that you use your sensory apparatus, your eyes, ears, nose, and throat, skin, whatever, perception, a sense of where your hands are, all of that stuff is done by mind, and all of these bodies are manufactured by mind. But you're not mind, and you never were mind, and you never were any of the creations of the mind. And if you take credit for, I wrote a book, or whatever, I said, whatever you sang a song, you didn't do it. Mind did it. What's mind's relationship to spirit? It's, um... Well, the Brent Beeson, the devil, thinks that we don't have an answer for it, so that was his answer. The devil doesn't know. The relationship between spirit and mind is as follows. Everybody has a mind, and everybody has a spirit. Which came first, the spirit or the mind? Bob's answer is the spirit came first, and mind came after. Mind would be a creation of spirit. Subsidiary to spirit, I would say so, yes. So what's the relationship between the silent witness and spirit? Well, Mary Baker Eddy, in her 1895 classic spiritual text, Science and Health, tells you that this world, that we consider the physical earth, is actually a spiritual world. And everything in this world, and every other world that's circling stars up there, or if you're into flat earth, I don't know, I don't see any difference. But if there is, I don't know. I, can't, I don't know enough about flat earth in order to give you a good answer. Because it's a bewilderment to me. And it's just easier for my monkey mind to go back to the old-fashioned ideas that we were taught in public school, whether it's right or wrong, that the Earth is a globe. But anyways... So the relationship between spirit and you as silent witness is... It's a spiritual world. Everything in it, including my smartphone that I'm talking to right now in order to record this video, is a spiritual thing. And what's the difference between spiritual and physical? It's the same lesson that you got in about 10th grade in physics class in high school. Sir Isaac Newton in the 1750s discovered calculus. I've been talking about Newton. Yeah, Newton. It was the, the apple fell on his head and he discovered gravity. Anyways, in those days, it was all about everything was physical. It was a physical world and physical relationships could be expressed through the equations you know of billiard ball physics but in around 1905 300 years later people like Werner Heisenberg who Breaking Bad lionized as you know the father of blue crystal meth crank Walter White used the code name Heisenberg, and Heisenberg was one of the fathers of quantum physics in around 1905. Werner Heisenberg. So you could look up Werner Heisenberg in Wikipedia and learn all about the guy who Walter White thinks is his hero. And that's what it's all about. Whatever the quantum physics is all about, the wave-like and particle-like nature of light, and which by extension is electromagnetic stuff, is electric? Well, Mary Baker Eddy is going to tell you. It doesn't fucking matter. It's all spiritual spirit stuff. Including protons and electrons. Yes, spiritualize everything. And the Canadian band, Our Lady Peace, has an album about spiritual machines. It's based upon the ideas, I think it's based upon, anyways. For You'd have to ask Rain Maida, maybe. Um, of Our Lady Peace, if that's true, but it is definitely Ray Kurzweil. 
the age of spiritual machines is uh, the name of one of his textbooks. Textbook? Well, you better figure it out. He's a polymath. He's like Buckyball. Buckminster Fuller. And Einstein. Ray Kurzweil. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so, you know, you should read... Uh, yeah, I, well, I don't know. If you like those kind of guys. Who is that guy? Hmm... Uh, I don't know. We're thinking of some guy. Maybe we'll come to it later. Um, anyways, Ray Kurzweil, many years ago, put that book out. Many, many years ago. And he also put a book called The Singularity is Near. Well, I don't know the date of that book. More than ten years ago. So, if more than 10 years ago the singularity was near, is it here now? What Ray Kurzweil was calling the singularity? That would be when we merge with machine intelligence in a good way or, good way or a bad way, with Ray Kurzweil in a good way. The current remote neural monitoring version of is a nightmare, horrific, demonic thing. And Ray Kurzweil is not a demonic person. Because it's technology that it's, can be used for good or can be used for bad, depending upon the quality of one's character. So, you know, if you're going to be a heart-led person, then you need to make sure what you decide one way or another, whether you want to be a devil or you want to be an angel. And remember, we're on an ascending planet, according to the story of the light, which means more and more consciousness coming in. And everybody naturally is going to float up into higher consciousness over time anyways. Unless people are actively working to be devils. But the Bible tells you what happens to devils is they end up in the lake of fire and they can't get out forever and ever and ever. In excoriating, excruciating pain. I don't know. Did you ever burn? Who didn't have some kind of a steam burn or you know some kind of a burn along the way? Exceptionally painful. Now you just turn up the intensity of that unbelievable pain and have it forever because you're disobeying the laws of evolution, which is that things evolve into more complexity. Well, I don't know when you get telepathy. Be telekinesis, claircognizance, yes, clairaudience, yes. Ability to talk with the birds. Well, if when you were a kid, four years old, and if you played with dolls, whether they were Barbies or G.I. Joes or something, or teddy bears, you can make those dolls talk when you were four years old. And if you can make those dolls talk and talk and interact with one another, interact with you when you were four, then you still have that skill. Because if you learned how to ride a bike when you were four or seven, you never forget. And you never forget how to make dolls talk to one another. So if you want to know what those crows are saying, then all you say out loud is, you're looking at those crows, is that crow says, blah, 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 whatever you get, or maybe he doesn't want to talk to me. But you'll get something. You will. You'll be amazed because you can talk to the animals. That way, you can say, well, a stranger's dog is that dog there is not happy. Because I had that not that long ago. That dog there was not happy with their owner, who had muzzled it. The dog is like, I don't need a muzzle. I don't want to be muzzled. The dog's like me. I don't want to be muzzled with a goddamn mask. So, anyways, so if you're going to be heart focused, then it, it helps out your monkey mind. Because your monkey mind learns that even if it asks a million questions, the heart doesn't speak in words. And, you know, if you read a few of these spiritual books or you watch some of my videos, your mind will pick up on this idea as well, that it might as well shut up because it can ask a million questions and that it's just that the mind itself gets driven nuts because it's asking questions of itself that it doesn't know. And that's just a dumb bunny thing to do. So it's better for the mind to be watching Star Trek, the original series, where Mr. Spock would ask questions of the library computer on the bridge of the Enterprise. And he either get a message about, you know, the calculation or whatever it was that he got. Mr. Spock often did the calculations in his head anyways, but the library computer could do it for other people that are so quick at math. 
But if the computer would say insufficient data, and that's what it would say. And then once your mind learns that there's insufficient data to be able to figure out where on earth the heart is taking it, it has to remind itself over and over. Well, you should just shut up then, because aren't you sick of asking the same question and the heart doesn't speak in words? So the best thing that the monkey mind can do is start paying attention to what it sees and hears and feels in its environment and becomes one with the silent witness. Because it's silently perched there, taking it all in and not being in control. But that's what you go when you go to a movie. You surrender the next two hours to whatever's going to be presented as a big surprise to you on the movie. And you like movies. You always go back. And you, you hate it when people spoil the movie. Spoiler alert. I mean, merely, you hate it. You don't want to know. Or you want to know a little bit so that you know, well, if it's between this movie and that one, because your mind is always wanting to decide. But in the end, it loves movies because it loves not knowing what's going to happen and watching to see what's going to happen. So your life stops being boring because the mind is controlling it and it doesn't know because it's not inspired the heart gets inspired and the mind no so if you want to have an inspired mind then you got to go and drop into your heart and say i am inspired i am inspiring i inspire minds and i inspire hearts i inspire the hearts and minds Hi, my name is Bobby Burroughs. And that's how I do it. That's called Affirmations from the I Am Teachings, which you can find on the internet. And everything that we've learned from Eckhart Tolle and David R. Hawkins about raising your consciousness on the scale of human consciousness. Or if you're watching Aaron Apke, um, you can see him on YouTube, A-B-K-E. If he's talking about law of one, then moving from third density to fourth density or into other levels, or if you're listening to the old band from the 60s, the fifth dimension, the Age of Aquarius song, well, that's the, called the fifth dimension, and fifth dimension is also, it's different than law of one and densities, but it's kind of talking about the same thing, so you, yeah, you kind of, if you're interested, want to know, or maybe you don't, whatever it is you're interested in. Anyways, I am interested and I am interesting are other affirmations that you can do and you get them into your heart and then all of these Groundhog Day like repeated behaviors that you know those things all come up and spiritual teachers all over YouTube are saying they're coming up for you to release them to let them go and say I no longer need to do those things because my monkey mind used to do those things in order to control other people and control outcomes but now my monkey mind is all about watching the movie so the mind should go silent and stop asking questions because the questions are already there. And it's like if you go to a movie theater and if you have somebody sitting behind you who's constantly asking questions of the movie screen, what the fuck does that mean? What the fuck does that mean? Well, it sounds like Jay, Silent, silent Bob and Jay. Jason Mewes plays that character. He's like, He's talking to, I can't help you out because I'm being fucked with by fucking demonic shit. Because that's what that is. Because so I was going to go and tell you right in there, but this is a demonic interlude. Bartleby, played by Ben Affleck. And Dogma. And Alana, Alanis Morissette. Well, that's a scene that I'm not going to describe. I'm not going to ruin it in this trailer or anything. But you can probably find it on YouTube. If not, watch the whole movie Dogma. What's better? Watch the whole movie Dogma. Because you've ruined the movie if you watch that little bit. But if you've already seen the movie and you want to... I don't know. Watch it again. Alanis Morissette and Ben Affleck. Where Ben Affleck is playing a character called Barbie. I don't know. I don't know how I got in there. But anyway, being heart-centered is simply by intention. I intend to be led by my heart and not my monkey mind. And so it is, and so it won't. Those are just coming. And just do those kind of things. And whatever comes up that seems like control behavior, and remember there's four control dramas, and you can go and look those up. Celestine Prophecy, four control dramas. 
intimidator, interrogator, aloof, and poor me. Those are four ways that people energy vampire you. Well, beyond that, energy vampires can vampire with you with an edunu. Talking to them on the phone or something. So low vibe people who've got the low setting, they're on the low setting, which is on the lower part of the scale of human consciousness, are energy vampires and time wasters and crazy makers. All those horrible, horrible, horrible micromanaging bosses and devils fuck faces we call them all because people are set on the low setting and they're dumb and impossible to rationally discuss anything with they're dirt devils and they have the brain power of house lies and they're dangerous as all hell worst criminals serial killers cannibals the other setting is high, and that brings you up high on the scale of human consciousness. And as I said earlier, what would Jesus do? You could write that on your left-hand path. In the right-hand path, you can say, what would Bobby Burroughs do? Or vice versa. Because I'm the Bishop of Bob. <laughs>